In this video, I want to discuss stripes, how they are placed on uh, suit jackets in preparation for cutting striped fabric to make a tailored garment. On the suit jacket, the V of the opening, this uh, lapel collar and then the opening here, is what frames the actor's face. And this is where we want to make extra sure that the placement of the stripes in the cutting and construction is beautifully balanced symmetrically side to side and frames that face. So here we have a close-up of the lapel facing and the over collar. The coat is cut underneath and this is the fabric of the under collar. But this is what shows when the lapel is rolled back, and so this is what we're going to talk about here. Here at the edge of the lapel, we want this stripe to follow the edge of the lapel. I don't know if uh, you can see it clearly, so I'm going to lay this twill tape just here showing you that the stripe follows beautifully the edge of the lapel, if we can zoom out to the top button here, almost all the way down to the top button. So that's a nice framing along the edge of this lapel. You'll notice also that that stripe isn't exactly at the edge of the lapel, it's set in a little bit. When you, uh, if you make the mistake of putting that stripe uh, right on the edge of your lapel facing, what it can look like is um, like a magic marker cartoon outlining of that lapel. And so setting the stripe in on the lapel facing is a nicer framing of that. Where the stripe intersects from the lapel facing to the over collar is a critical area. Now because of geometry, uh, the pattern for the, the line of the top of the facing is at a, a straighter angle and the line on the pattern of the over collar is at a more acute angle. That means these cannot be mirror images as those angles come in to the stripe. And so it's often uh, a near miss as you can see right here. Can we zoom into this area? It's often a near miss we want to get it in the ballpark to where this stripe comes up and has some sort of relationship with the stripe that is on the over collar. You're not going to match it perfectly. It looks here like they matched this softer stripe and then this slightly bolder stripe is ever so slightly off. Whatever you do on this side ought to be mirrored on this side for that nicely balanced look. So we've discussed the placement of the stripe on the lapel and then the over collar and that's what frames the face. We next want to consider the stripe on the front of the coat. Now the underneath of the lapel is not going to show so that's a secondary consideration. What we want to consider primarily is the true center front of the coat where it overlaps and underlaps where the button gets placed, uh, sewn on, is true center front. Where the hole on the buttonhole is, is true center front. What we want here at true center front, I keep saying true center front because some people get confused that the front edge is center front and it's not. So I just designate true center front when I'm uh, teaching just to highlight what that means. What we want here is the true center front placed between the prominent stripe. And I, it looks to me like this red, slightly red stripe is the prominent one. So they've placed that slightly uh, off of that. And that again is so you don't have a bold stripe going down the center front. It looks like a cartoon outline. And you want the mirror image of each side off of true center front to march those stripes in the same rhythm around the body. When considering this hang of the sleeve and where the stripes go on that, you can either have the prominent stripe 
go from the shoulder seam, and here's that red stripe, down to the hem. Or you can take those stripes and center them or offset them so that the negative space within the stripe is heading down. You often see, I think you more often see, that the prominent stripe is heading from the shoulder seam down to the hem like this. Every time you make a decision about the placement of the stripe, you need to consider the ramifications on either side of that. For example, this coat has the stripe, the red stripe, uh, coming off of the shoulder seam down to the hem. That's the true, that's the grain line there. And then before you cut, you want to consider where that marches the stripe around to. And if that is in a pleasing uh, rhythm with the front. So here's a red stripe, red stripe, red stripe, red stripe here, this red stripe. It almost matches um, and then starts marching around the sleeve. If you have a very bold stripe, a musical comedy kind of a stripe, you really want to make sure that you're not setting up uh, opposing rhythms. Now, because the sleeve cap is gathered, eased ever so slightly into the arm's eye, if you are attempting to match a stripe or a plaid uh, here at the front notch, it just won't match the rest of the way around across the, the sleeve cap. Because of that easing, that gathering it in, it changes the rhythm of the stripe. In addition to the geometry on the curve of the sleeve cap is, hits the stripes in a different way than the geometry of the curve of the arm's eye. We'll look at a pattern in a minute and you'll see what I mean. Here at the hip pocket, they have a pocket flap and then a, a welt under here. Uh, it looks like they did not cut the pocket welt on the straight of grain, otherwise we would see uh, small pieces of red marching up this way. They probably placed it along the straight of grain this way so that it is a solid. That's perfectly fine. On the pocket flap, this is a tricky thing to consider. The coat front itself comes over here, and here is a side front dart. So that interrupts the rhythm of the stripe right here, it feels like just about a quarter of an inch. Then we come over here and this is a seam. They attempted to match the stripe here, they did a pretty good job, but because it flares out and over the hip, there's extra width here. So which of these three places, in front of the dart, the major part of the body, or behind this seam, where do you match? this pocket flap. Looks to me like they matched this front edge, this beige stripe goes all the way down through and onto the bottom of the coat and it almost matches here and then the pocket flap itself, because it doesn't have a dart or a seam in it, just marches across. They were more concerned with matching that stripe here at the bottom it matches three places before we get to this side front seam. Up here at the top, it only matches at that faint uh, stripe here. So they were more concerned with matching at the bottom, which is great, that's a choice. When it comes to matching a stripe on the chest, uh, the breast pocket, the slanted welt pocket, it's very easy because there are no darts or seams to interrupt the marching of the stripe across this chest. And so you can easily match the welt to the stripe of the coat all the way across that uh, welt, and that makes it look very, very nice. You want to make sure to cut the ends of your cut and construct each end of your welt pocket absolutely um, uh, squared off so that the edge of the pocket, edge of the welt, it creates another vertical in that marching of the stripe. When approaching the placement of stripes at the center back, 
the place that is most prominent and most rounded is here across the shoulder blades. And so often you'll choose this area right here to maintain the march of those stripes across the breadth of that shoulder. And so you can see that this, between the two red, uh, slightly red stripes, is the same distance at, with a seam in it. It's seamed together so that this distance is exactly the same as the distance between the red stripes all across that. The center back seam is generally curved in at the back, uh, back neck, and so those stripes will narrow as they go into that neck and they'll probably narrow as it tapers, the pattern tapers in to the narrower waist. Uh, then generally from there down, uh, as you can see on this, you'll want that uh, to be mostly on the straight of grain right here. And that's because of the construction of this, this vent. Uh, that will hang much better if it is on a straight of grain rather than at a bias or angled. Although for fit and style, it certainly can be. If you end up putting that on a slight angle and therefore on a slight bias, just put a little bit of interfacing inside that to firm, up, firm it up so it doesn't stretch out. Once you have the back set, then it's time to cut the over collar. And it's very pleasing when the stripes on the over collar railroad right into the stripe, the rhythm of the stripe on the back. You want to check out that relationship before, as you're cutting, um, before you're cutting, so that this rhythm is correct and pleasing. And you want to swing that around and make sure that there's some sort of relationship between the stripe here in the front from the lapel facing onto that over collar. Uh, we want that to be pleasing as well. This needs to live in harmony, as does this. It's like a giant puzzle, jigsaw puzzle, and you have to figure it out before you even pick up your scissors to start cutting stripes. So let's take a look at how all of that discussion translates into the paper pattern. For example, here's the coat front. And here then is the paper pattern. We talked about the true center front needing to be on a, between a major stripe. And you can see here, this stripe here at this button, the stripe is about an inch away from the actual front edge. But here the stripe tapers off and falls off of the front of the coat, or actually the stripe stays the same, the front of the coat is the what is curving to the side. And the reason for that is that um, that cut puts more fabric here in the chest, which is generally larger, and less fabric at the waist, so it creates a narrowing um, uh, effect there. Here, that narrowing effect at the waist is indicated by the slant, apparent slant, of the grain line, so that if this were square on the fabric, the center front edge would slant like this. And that might have an effect on your stripes, as it does indeed here, where the stripe starts to run off. We talked about having the stripe run along, uh, down the edge of this lapel this way and how that's reflected in the lapel facing is this, I'm placing the ruler on the straight of grain, and so this edge would run along uh, the edge of the lapel. Now you can see there's a slight bowing out here. How we manipulate that when we cut it into wool is that wool, my favorite fiber because it responds so nicely to steam and heat with the iron, we would steam this and curve that stripe so that the stripe, even though it's woven on the straight, that stripe will follow the edge of the curve. And that's something you do in the construction at a later step. 
when I was discussing the sleeve cap and how it eases into the arm's eye, I was talking about giving some attention to the rhythm, marching of the rhythm of the stripes across. And also I mentioned that because of the geometry, this is an inside curve, the sleeve cap is an outside curve. It's, it's very unlikely that you would get these two stripes to match. And I think you can clearly see that when I line up the coat front, and this is the front notch. This is a two-piece sleeve, so this is the top sleeve, and there's my front corner, front uh, seam. And you can see while they are similar, they aren't perfectly the same, and so you wouldn't be able to marry them perfectly together with the stripes coming up. As I discussed on the back of the coat, we want the marching of the stripe to go evenly across this broadest part of the shoulder. Uh, tends to, uh, the shaping on the back tends to narrow a little bit here and taper into the waist and then on the straight of grain for the vent. So let's look at that center back seam in the coat pattern and you can see I place this ruler parallel to the grain line, it bows out quite a bit. There's quite a lot of ease, nice amount of ease for this theatrical tailoring where actors need to reach and move. So I tend to put a little bit more ease than uh, across the shoulders than you might find in a manufactured suit, for example. And finally, here at the back of the neck, you can see that the collar folds down and railroads nicely. The stripes on the collar go nicely into the stripe on the back. And in the paper pattern, this is the back. Here's your center back, your neck, and here is the collar that gets stitched on there and folds over. So really, when you're placing this collar, it's not the neck edge that you're interested in matching, it's the outer edge of the collar railroading nicely on those stripes into the body.